Hello, I'm Dr. DeVazier, your organic chemistry instructor. The purpose of this video is to introduce you to key issues in Lab 4, the greener brumination of still bean. Your student goals are the following goals. As always, you want to work safely in the lab and properly dispose of waste using the principles of green chemistry. You want to learn new techniques that are going to improve your laboratory skills not only in organic chemistry but in other labs. And um, specific to organic chemistry, you want to achieve a high yield in a pure product. And as always, you want to think about the equipment you're using, the experimental nature of what you're doing, and any ways that you can think of to improve the method. Um, what I'm going to do now is go through and tell you specifically how you can do each one of these in, um, in this laboratory, in the bromination of steel bean. The first goal is working safely in the laboratory. So there are three major um, chemical materials that you need to pay careful attention to. Uh, the first one that I'm going to talk about is uh, hydrobromic acid. It is in fact corrosive, um, very similar to hydrochloric acid. Um, it, you should make sure that you avoid contact with skin. It will readily damage skin and clothing. Um, and you need to make sure that you avoid any direct uh, exposure to vapors. As with any acid, you should clean up spills immediately with a saturated sodium bicarbonate solution. What that means is that will, um, uh, so saturated sodium bicarbonate is a weak base. It will neutralize the acid, and then you can clean it up uh, with a paper towel. The other material that you're going to be working with is, uh, that's potentially um, damaging to skin and clothing is hydrogen peroxide. It's a very strong oxidizer, um, at, and I've, I've had it... Um, uh, a, a slight hydrogen peroxide burn before. If you're not very careful, even the splash can be damaging. And so even a small amount uh, can damage your clothes. You'll notice a um, uh, damage on your clothing. And if it gets on your skin, you'll get, um, at the very least, a white mark. Um, it's a burn mark. And a lot of folks are very sensitive to peroxide on their skin at this concentration and can develop uh, even a welt or something uh, worse. So be careful and um, make sure you use gloves that you are covered um, from uh, your neck all the way to your toes. And um, it, if you feel that you need to, I would recommend wearing long sleeves or a lab coat um, just to give you an additional layer of protection. And um, uh, the third thing is uh, ethanol is flammable. You'll need to avoid any open flames. Um, this ethanol is not... Um, is not like anything you would buy in the grocery store. This uh, ethanol has been um, uh, denatured with uh, potentially uh, harmful materials. So um, not only is drinking absolutely not permitted in the laboratory, drinking this ethanol would be a seriously bad idea. Okay, so if you have any questions about specific disposal of materials, you need to make sure that you ask your instructor. Uh, but today you're going to have two types of waste. You're going to have um, a filtrate and a solid product. The filtrate in this case um, should go into the flammable waste container. There's a typo here that says aqueous waste container should go into the flammable waste container. Um, in this case, you're going to have some ethanol present in your filtrate, uh, so you do need to dispose of that properly in the flammable waste container. Your solid product should go in the solid waste container. Remember from last week that you want to um, avoid any potential mistakes uh, and make sure that you have all of the data before you throw away any solid material. Uh, I would, again, recommend keeping the solid material for an additional week just to make sure that you don't need it um, for further measurement. You're going to need to uh, review any technique uh, on uh, melting point and vacuum filtration. If you uh, feel that you didn't quite get it last time, uh, feel free to go ahead and look at those technique tutorials. Otherwise, if you feel comfortable with those, uh, simply move on um, in, in specific uh, to this laboratory. So make sure you get your um, uh, lab protocol um, read and written down and transferred to your lab and make sure you take the online pre-lab quiz. That should help you, um, that in this video should prepare you adequately um, for um, a, a great educational experience in lab this week. The bromination of steel bean um, can be done in a variety of methods. The method that we're going to be using is a more environmentally friendly method, which uses hydrobromic acid and hydrogen peroxide to affect the um, transbromination. 
Ethanol is going to be your solvent, and you're going to heat this reaction at reflux. And so um, you're going to have a similar table that you designed in the last reaction um, experiment, the aldol condensation reaction. And there again, you want to make sure that you um, accurately label your table and that you have all of the pertinent information for each chemical material, including the molecular weight, the amount of material that you expect to um, weigh out, and you want to leave a space for the amount that you actually use so that you can accurately calculate, calculate your theoretical yield um, when in, before you leave lab. In terms of the reaction, what you're going to do is prepare a hot water bath. So you're actually going to run this reaction in a recrystallization dish. So those will be available for you in the laboratory when you come in. They're very large, uh, like it's almost like a half beaker um, sort of. Uh, uh, glassware and so you want to prepare a hot water bath so the, that's the first thing that you want to do get some water into your recrystallization dish put it onto your heating your hot plate um, the hot plate stirring combo you want to put that onto your uh, hot plate stir bar combo and get to heating your water bath so that it, it can get hot as you're um, as you're fitting your uh, condenser onto your flask containing the steel bean and the ethanol. Then what you're going to do is you're going to add the hydrobromic acid and the peroxide um, uh, in different additions. So the hydrobromic acid first, followed by the peroxide. And you would want to follow your procedure exactly there. Um, <clears throat> you're going to add those through the top of the reflux condensing column. Let me just uh, kind of show you what I mean here. So this is an actual picture of the bromination of steel bean. And so you'll see this is the reflux um, apparatus. So what you do is you take your, you have two condensers in your glassware kit. One is kind of slender and the other is uh, larger, uh, fatter. And so you want to take the fatter condenser. That's your, uh, that's your reflux condenser. And um, you'll put water in on the bottom and out on the top. You want to think about why that would be the case. I think it's a very interesting uh, question. So try to think about it between the two lab partners and, and talk through it and check with your instructor and, and see if your instructor agrees with your reasoning. But the water goes in on the bottom, out on the top. Why not the other way around? I, I think that's a good thing for you to think about, question, and ponder. So once you have this all set up, um, you want to make sure that the water is flowing before you add heat. That is critical in every reaction case. The, um, the heating element there on the bottom, that's your hot plate. Um, those are located at the front of the lab, so you'll go and retrieve one of the hot plates, and then you'll set this up immediately um, upon starting lab. You'll notice that you have about a 20 minute reaction time. Um, you're going to add the HBr through the uh, condenser, and then you're going to notice a little bit of a color change after you add the peroxide. Um, <clears throat> so what that's doing is that's generating the bromine, Br2, in solution, and that's what's actually um, acting as your uh, uh, electrophilic uh, addition reagent. Now, one of the things that you want to do is in this reaction that, that might help you to get a good reflux going, and that is to make a foil tent. I know this is kind of silly looking, um, but the goal is to put foil around your condensing column and um, what that does is that traps some of the heat. Now, in this case, you probably won't have to do it. This gets to going um, pretty well, so the, the reflux uh, will, and, and all reflux is, let me just go back here and show you one thing. Bear with me for just a second. So what reflux is, and you'll notice <clears throat> here um, in this apparatus, you have the round bottom flask immersed in the water bath, and then as the, in this case, water is the most uh, volatile material um, in, in the steel bean. And so what it'll start to do is it'll start to move up the, co the condenser. And um, uh, so what you'll be able to see is the vapors sort of moving up that condenser column. And you want them to reach about halfway. If they go further than half, that's a little too vigorous of a reflux. If they go uh, below halfway, then that's not quite a good enough, so it's too weak of a reflux. So you want them to be about halfway, and so that's what reflux is, is the vapors cool, uh, they, they rise, okay, and then they cool and condense on the condensing column and fall back down. 
So basically what this does, this is allows us, this condenser column allows us to heat a volatile system at a pretty high temperature without losing any of the solvent vapors or without losing any of the solvent period or any of the other organic materials in the reaction. So um, this is the way that we actually affect heat in the organic lab. Okay, one second here. Okay, so here's our tent foil. You probably won't need this in this uh, reaction. You'll probably need it next week though. Um, the goal here is to wrap your condenser coil in foil that keeps the heat in um, and so you won't, don't want to wrap it tight like, a, um, like you're preserving food. You want to make a tent. That is, you want it larger at the bottom and smaller at the top so that you actually have a convection process um, that redistributes the heat from the bottom up. The workup is going to be a neutralization with sodium bicarbonate, and then you're going to check the pH and filter the solid. Um, so you're going to keep the solid, discard the solution in the flammable waste container. And then you're going to cool the flask and collect the solid via vacuum filtration. So again, your solid is your product, the brominated steel bean, and then you're going to determine melting temperature from there. Here is a uh, video of the addition of, uh, in this case, is the uh, hydrogen peroxide. You can see the dark color. Um, happen there very quickly and so that's a student in the hood actually adding the peroxide down through the condenser column into the solution okay you want to do that very carefully you'll notice that student did a very good job making sure all of the solution went through the condenser and didn't drop down to the uh, side so um, that's a that's a very important thing that you want to uh, take care of so that's a part of your technique that you want to perfect Think about what's going on in this experiment. So you see, you'll notice a, um, a benzene ring with this uh, alkenyl group attached. So that's a, the, the common name for this is still bean, um, vinyl benzene. And you'll notice that what's happening is we're adding HPR and peroxide, and we're getting this uh, transbromination. So we're getting the addition of two bromines. So you'll notice that, first of all, you have to balance that equation properly. You'll need two equivalents of the HBr for every equivalent of the still bean that you'll add. However, the still bean and the dibromo still bean are in fact one to one in their stoichiometric ratio. So make sure that you analyze the chemical composition of the starting materials and the product to make sure that you can identify what is actually occurring in this reaction. Again, um, just like in the Aldol lab, we have a few uh, post lab key points here. One is you want to make sure that you use the rubric as the title page. Um, that's very important. You also need to make sure that signatures from both partners appear uh, to receive full credit. And you want to make sure that you have an experimental procedure um, that's written in uh, general terms. Uh, you'll need to refer to the posted example uh, to uh, uh, basically translate that to your specific case. And then you want to have the results section that's tabulated, which includes mass yields, um, that is the total amount you collected, the percent yield, and all characterization data. The appendix must include both copies of uh, the lab partner's notebook entries, uh, again, to receive full credit. I'd like to thank um, the folks at the University of Oregon, Dr. Brandt, and the other instructors, as well as Aldrich Chemical Company and the Journal of Organic Chemistry for their help in the supplemental information used in this video and in the organic lab. And thank you for your attention. Have fun. Be safe in lab.